हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज दिव्यांशु व्यास एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग ओवर हियर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स ओवर हियर बट बिफोर वी स्टार्ट लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ आई एम अ पेट्रोलियम इंजीनियर आई पास आउट इन टू थाउजेंड एटीन एंड आई बीन परस्यूंग माई मास्टर्स इन आई आई टी आई एस एम धनबाद आई हैव माई इंटरेस्ट राइट नाउ आई बीन डीलिंग विद वेरियस एप्लीकेशन ऑफ रिजर्वर इंजीनियरिंग पेट्रोलियम इंजीनियरिंग मशीन लर्निंग इन Uh, oil and gas and all these kind of fancy things but the very important thing that i personally prefer doing is understanding things be it physics be it mathematics be it any science field i always prefer understanding things and that's what i will be trying to convey we will be understanding things together there will be a lot of things i won't understand but i will try to understand and convey right i'll be following the richard feynman concept i'll be teaching everything from scratch to scratch so Let's continue forward with this subject called reservoir engineering. It is a very important subject uh, by terms of petroleum engineering. One of my faculties in uh, ISM, he always says that actual petroleum engineering is reservoir engineering. Why? We'll know why because you know you you could have seen that in companies, various companies, there are a lot of people employed for various uh, drilling engineering jobs. a lot of uh, other fields mechanical people employed for drilling engineer jobs electrical engineers supplied for cementing jobs and all these kind of tough things but if you go go and check for you go to kn india limited and you you, you check for uh, uh, the post of uh, reservoir engineer you will always find a petroleum engineer filling that job it's very important because it's in the heart of oil and gas industry if you understand reservoir engineering very well you're actually you're actually understanding almost everything related to petroleum engineering it's in the heart you are the god of petroleum engineering if you understand this thing okay so uh, not like every other course will not go in a random direction trying to study this topic and this topic and all, and then uh, landing up nowhere i'll try to create a structural uh a uh, methodology a uh, continuous framework by which we will understand things i'll try to make you imagine things like the daily examples when i'm will talking rocks i'll not be talking rocks i'll be talking about things that you see nearby yourself i'll be talking about sponges i'll be talking about plastics i'll be talking about every other thing that you can personally find right so that things become easier to understand okay so now let's get to the subject talking all right so you have uh, by now whatever year you are in in your stream in your petroleum engineering career by now you know that your subject is related to rocks and the science is related to rocks right so what's important is how you determine how you find oil in that rock it's very important and that's a lot to do with reservoir engineering why you calling it a reservoir is because someone is stored in something right there is a container and there 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 is something stored right you have a milk milk stored in a pan and you call it a milk reservoir you have a uh, water stored in a in a um, container you call it a reservoir right so this is the actual definition of a reservoir in petroleum engineering terms uh, if this is my fluid right this is my fluid and this is my fluid and uh, the black black ink is used to represent the container in petroleum engineering terms this exact thing is represented by this this is a rock and this is the fluid which is nothing but oil or gas or in short hydrocarbons right and our goal as a reservoir engineer is to study this to characterize these things to understand the properties the science the data the analysis behind this thing right and this is what we will be going to understand okay so the first thing if you want to understand a reservoir is understand the external container right this is the container right so the container is your rock right it's called the lithology it's a fancy term but it represents the rock type right because the rock will be the place where your oil will be stored okay so once you understand what kind of rock is capable of storing hydrocarbon you are actually kicking start your uh, petroleum engineering or reservoir engineering domain right so by now let's assume you know that uh, sedimentary rocks and basically sandstones actually successfully store oil like this so now you know that if you are going around in a reservoir you want to look for uh, you want to look for sandstones right because sandstone has oil in it 
so now you have developed the knowledge regarding your petroleum engineering that okay i have to differentiate uh, igneous rock and uh, shale and everything and i have to spot a sandstone because by my reservoir engineering knowledge what i know is a sandstone has the capability to store oil right now once you have determined this what is the next step the next step is how much oil right and how much oil is there that's okay but can the oil flow that is very important what di differentiates a reservoir from a non reservoir rock is the ability to let the oil first get stored and second allow it to flow right and that's the exact and the correct definition of a reservoir the reservoir is not just there to store oil it is also there to conduct the flow to allow the oil to get produced otherwise what is the if you are storing water in a container which you cannot use how can you how can you like uh, call it a good reservoir it's not a reservoir because a reservoir has to be used some day or the other that's why we are always hearing about sandstones because sandstones allow storage sandstones allow production so it's like it's a very crude definition there are a lot of technicalities but you don't have to you have to always look at the bigger picture right you don't have to be a petroleum engineer who's like okay permeability is 57.6 milli darcy's and uh, i'm doing great i found the answer but what does it mean is it correct is it are you looking at the bigger picture are you able to quantify good permeability bad permeability things like this this is how you should be understanding things right so uh, the properties that we will be looking at is, as a reservoir engineer are following but let me give you a brief uh, history of a, how a reservoir is formed right so you've heard about dinosaurs being there a long time back right and uh, time over time the dinosaurs get buried and they get subsided and they form layers and they are deposited into rocks so these dinosaurs convert into hydrocarbons and they are crushed within the rocks right so these uh, blackish rocks you call them shales or you call them source rocks this is where the petroleum gets stored you know it is source and not a reservoir because like again i said it cannot produce oil it is very porous maybe it can store a lot of oil but it maybe cannot produce oil right so over years of pressure you keep on press pressing it and you keep on you know over the time soil gets uh, you know sediments get deposited pressure keeps on applying that pressure is called overburden you keep on applying overburden and this oil gets you know it needs a place to get out somewhere it's getting expelled from its from its place so it gets expelled and it goes somewhere where it can stay peacefully and this is the reservoir rock right so this is a source rock and this is migration and this is your reservoir rock and this is where your oil is now staying peacefully and if you drill a well you have a well and you drill a well to produce from it you will be able to produce oil because as a reservoir engineer you drill over here and not here right this is unconventional engineering it will be covered in a separate course but conventional oil production and easy oil production comes on from a reservoir rock what if you didn't have a reservoir engineering knowledge suppose there there is a igneous rock and you know a lava or something like like there right so suppose i'm not a petroleum engineer and i don't have the reservoir engineering knowledge and i have two options and i don't know what if i i drill over here would i get oil no i won't why didn't i get oil because i lack the knowledge of reservoir engineer right so you are understanding the whole importance you getting a feel of how important these things are right the the whole picture of how important these things are now let's get to the technical terms in a non technical way right the properties that are important to find to call a reservoir rock a reservoir rock to call a rock a reservoir rock is some properties like porosity like this one right second is permeability third is saturation there are other properties like uh, texture and all uh, they are important but you don't study they are very theoretical and uh, you know you always so le let's let's straight head to the stories about uh, porosity and permeability
right? And take a minute to clear some space. All right. So we'll take an example again. Suppose you get a uh, what do you get? Uh, a sponge, right? Now you fill you you dip the sponge uh, into a, a, a bucket of water, right? Some water gets stored. The sponge gets wet, right? And the water, some water drips out, and some water just stays there. Why does the water stay there? It stays there because the sponge has the ability to retain or to store some water, right? That retain, retaining tendency, retaining tendency, or storage tendency. is what we call as porosity right and it is given by this symbol phi right this is the first little definition that you have to understand it's just the empty space in a substance that allows the storage of fluids nothing else right and it does not have to be you know it does not have to be uh, you know in the sponge example wherever the fluid went is actually connected from the outside world and that is a different kind of porosity which is called the effective porosity right porosity has its types right it has various bases but right now we'll be looking at a particular one based on the connectivity based on the connectivity of pores there are effective pores i'll draw nice diagrams for these things let's just list them down effective pores right the pores that are connected to the outside world and to each other right this is effective porosity the second is dead end pores right the pores of which both the ends are not open right suppose this is a pore and this way is blocked and this way is open so fluid will come here but it cannot get out right but in an effective pore fluid comes from here goes out from here right so this is an effective pore this is a dead end pore or you also call it as cul de sac c u l d e s a c cul de sac pores right and the third is the least favorite of all isolated pores right the examples suppose i have a okay like Uh, suppose we take an example of a tennis ball a hollow tennis ball it's porous right it's it's empty from the inside it's very porous but what's the feel that you are that's preventing you from calling it a reservoir it's not connected to any pore or any out, outside world right it's not connected by any way it's an isolated pore right so isolated pores i'll i'll try to display all the pores in one diagram I'll display them over here. So this is your rock, right? So this, uh, let's say, this is your connected pore, right? It's an effective porosity, right? This is your cul de sac pore or the dead end pore, right? This is effective. This is dead end, and this is isolated pore right so what's your favorite porosity if you want to produce or if you are thinking as a reservoir engineering brain this is your favorite porosity the effective porosity is what you are basically interested in unless and until you don't want to crush the rock or something if you crush the rock and you measure the porosity you'll be measuring the total porosity this plus this plus this gives you total porosity okay this is just by let me mind you this is just on the basis of connectivity okay now we'll talk about another basis which is source or uh, origin how did the pore originate right so like i said uh, the, the the formation of rock it takes place after one Thousand million years of sediments get uh, collected in one place and they get solidified, and the pores between those sediments they lead to porosity. Right? This is how it happens. So the porosity developed as this natural process is called the natural porosity. 
right so this is natural or primary porosity natural or primary porosity right this is very common in sandstones almost every porosity of sandstones is a natural or uh, prime uh, primary porosity right the second is secondary porosity and this is very common in carbonate rocks it is dealing with the uh, phenomena happening after the rock was formed right what happens in carbonates is uh, for example uh, there is some material which can get dissolved into some other material so this material this is the rock right and this is some material which i can dissolve with this chemical right so after this whole phenomena what happens is this rock loses this part right this part is lost because it's dissolved so this part is now a void it's empty space this is called secondary porosity because it developed after the rock was formed it is very common in carbonates right so this is primary porosity and this is uh, secondary porosity and the, the sum of total of all this is called the total porosity right so this is all about porosity now we'll talk about permeability right uh, so it's very important to get a feel of what porosity is uh, before you you know write the definitions down and uh, the feel is very important in reservoir engineering now again let's go back to the example of a sponge right so the sponge if you uh, you know if you cover the wet sponge with a polythene bag and you try to crush it the water does not come out why does not it come out there can be two reasons first the pores are now not connected to the outside world there is a lack of flowability of the fluid right this feeling is called permeability the ability with which a rock allows or does not allow the fluid to flow through it is called permeability right it's very important more more important than porosity is it's very 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 important because it is the only phenomena that will allow the fluid to flow right so uh, in the next part we will be covering the uh, permeability thank you guys this is divyanshu vyas